I'm Carl Anthony with AutoSense TV. Here at AutoSense Brussels 2019, we have returned to the renowned Auto World Museum. And we're speaking today with Arvind Ratnam, who is the Vice President of Products for AI. And Arvind, so good that you could be here to join us today. Glad to be here, thank you. So tell us a little bit about AI. Just give us the overview of the company. Um, AI was born as a robotic intelligence company. Uh, we enable um, intelligence on top of the sensor using a very unique um, LiDAR camera fusion method, but that's just one part of our innovation. We've brought in uh, a series of firsts to the industry, uh, including being the first um, software enabled or software controllable LiDAR, um, and that enables uh, the sensor itself uh, to become more intelligent than it is today. Uh, and, and doing that enables a whole number of uh, corner cases that will be absolutely needed for advanced levels of autonomous driving. So let's talk about both of those things. Let's start with the corner cases. What are some of the most common corner cases that you deal with on a daily basis? Right. I mean, part of the reason why people actually look at um, uh, LIDARs is so that they can address these edge corner cases. One of the problems with, 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 with cameras is, uh, is being able to see when lighting conditions aren't so good or when the weather isn't so great. Uh, when you have a bunch of fog, etc., and then there's 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 radar which can actually see far, but the problem is the resolution isn't isn't up there, and and the lidar can potentially overcome uh, both of these challenges, uh, but you you need um, you need some extra capabilities that we actually bring uh, to, uh, bring to bear um, with the, the unique architecture that we have. Some of the corner cases uh, that we have, uh, that we look at on a daily basis almost, in, in include, say, say, swerving when there's an object, looking at a black tire when it's really far away. Um, uh, because, you know, it, the whole concept of autonomous driving has to work at highway speeds. Other examples include, say, a trailer crossing into um, into your field of view, and the trailer might be white or, or, or shiny, so that in broad uh, daylight you may not even be able to see it, and that was part of what caused uh, accidents like what we saw with Tesla a, a while ago. So if you actually put, put all these together, um, your suite of sensors has to be uh, uh, intelligent enough and smart enough to be able to navigate all of these scenarios and that's what we bring to the table. With that in mind, Arvind, let's talk about what's needed to move ADAS systems forward to the next level of perception. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, this was a point I was making in the roundtable uh, that I was running last evening as well, which is, you know, in the past it's always been about, well, does intelligence reside at the edge or does it reside in the central compute module? Uh, the real answer, as it is turning out to be, is that we need the best of both worlds. Really, you need you need advanced architectures like what, say, for example, NVIDIA enables with all of the smartness that you can get at the edge so that you're efficient in the way you collect data and the way you process data and the way you actually return information so that so that um, uh, future compute systems can operate with more efficiently with with less power less weight uh, and act and make the car uh, smaller cheaper at the same time more more efficient so it's really a combination of both you mentioned uh, that you had talked about this here at AutoSense you hosted a roundtable discussion specifically on this topic reinventing the three R's of LiDAR, redefining the three R's of LiDAR. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So um, in the past, when people have looked at LiDARs, and to an extent radars as well because they're related, um, uh, they've frequently just used uh, range, refresh rate, and resolution. So range is how far your sensor can see. Um, uh, refresh rate is, is how much you, your you know what your frame rate is, uh, so on and so forth. And resolution is what you know what's the minimum distance between two objects so you can uh, resolve, etc. And that has been sufficient for uh, looking at first generation sensors. But uh, what's gotten interesting is that the market has gotten more sophisticated. People are people are actually looking at sensors with a more nuanced approach. For example, just with range, it's not just about, um, about how far can you see, but how far can you see reliably? How far can you really classify an object? Not just, not just detect that there is something, but can you actually, how, fa uh, how far can you actually uh, uh, detect the object and classify that it is a potential threat to you? 
And secondly, it's not just about ju dumb refresh rate, but it's really about, um, about am I refreshing, am I, do I have enough capability that I can actually see a child running in front of my car or, or, um, or the trailer example that I, that I spoke about earlier. Um, and, and you know, resolution is 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 the the thing is if you just look at resolution as um, um, as it stands in a very uh, basic way, uh, you you're going to miss a bunch of objects. So the the real question is if you look at the way the human eye perceives objects around us, we don't pay a lot of attention to things that are not a threat to us, and this comes from our basic instincts as an, as as, uh, as 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 animals. But as we have evolved, we have learned to understand what's important in the scene and and keep and, 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 and disregard things that are not important. For example, the sky is not going to fall on your head. The tree is probably not going to fall in your roadway. Whereas uh, that person, that pedestrian over there and that vulnerable road user and this child who's about to uh, cross into my path, all of those things are more important than, than, than the other objects that I mentioned. So the real thing about resolution is, is can I get enough resolution in order to, to see those things at a good enough granularity that, that my vision system can actually classify what it is and take the necessary action or, or, or drive the necessary information that's needed to take the action. So really our, uh, what AI has done is, is not specific to the AI architecture, but actually uh, we're encouraging the industry to think a little bit beyond what we have today so that uh, so that we can have more effective sensor architectures in the future so that the overall system can be optimized uh, to, at the end of the day, we want to del deliver those savings to the OEM and eventually the customer so that, you know, the autonomous driving can become more affordable. And speaking of the OEMs, how can tier one suppliers, how can they package all of this together but still present it to OEMs in a way that OEMs can actually use it? Yeah, so um, I think uh, this is another point that I mentioned yesterday is, is that the onus is on us, the sensor makers, for a few things. One is functional safety, being able to deliver these systems that actually work extremely reliably. Second uh, is, um, is equipping the tier one as well as the OEM with the necessary tools in order to utilize the smart capabilities that we provide uh, right outside the system. And uh, number three is uh, encouraging interoperability, uh, just making sure that that the capabilities that we all offer interoperate with the rest of the subsystems that are uh, that are in the in the vehicle, so that uh, so that you know uh, the path to production doesn't you know you don't introduce additional risk in the path to production. So all three, all three are are important. Uh, dynamic capabilities are cool; they're they're nice to have, but it's very very important that that we also show a path to production so that you don't you don't confuse. I mean, if you look at where car makers came from, they came from a heritage of bending metal, yeah. and now you're introducing all of the software, all of the sophistication and new hardware, et cetera. So you want to make the path to adoption fairly fairly easy to them. So all of that, fo all of that burden lies on us, uh, the technology providers. Last question here, Arvin. What do you enjoy most about your job at AI? Oh, it's a, <laughs> you know, I, if you asked me this question last year, I would have said it's the wild, wild west. But now, you know, um, now that we have our deep engagements with tier ones, etc., we have started to really understand how this whole business works, and we've started to iron out a whole bunch of wrinkles that we had, etc. So every day is a new challenge. We are in the midst of exciting times when automakers are coming out with new RFIs and RFQs, and we are we are responding to all of the ones that are pretty much out there and we are happy to be in the in the top few lidar companies in the world and, and so i mean the, there's there's a new challenge every every day and that's what keeps us keeps us alive arvin we want to thank you for your time from all of us here at autosense tv we want to wish you good luck in brussels and have a great event thank you i appreciate it Speaking today with Arvind from AI, new challenges, new opportunities, and the exciting world of vehicle perception technology and autonomous driving. Learning a lot here today with Arvind from AI. For more AutoSense Brussels, for more AutoSense TV, like, subscribe, and share.